Hi folks, so in the last video I mentioned that there are various schemes that you can use to have a server, like a centralized server that stores usernames and passwords and so when you've got other systems on the network they can authenticate over the network to find out whether the, someone's username and password is correct for example to let them into the system. So there, and I've described a, a, a number of concepts related to that. One way that you can achieve that is using LDAP. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about in this video in a little bit more detail. So LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol and it's, it's a network protocol so it is a set of rules essentially of how you send communications over TCP IP and you ask questions of a hierarchical like a tree structured database. Now the the database itself, um, it's up to the LDAP server to figure out how to store that and how it's stored on disk, for example, and what software that is. The LDAP is technically not the not the database. LDAP is the name of the protocol that you use to like ask ask the questions um, of the database. So, I guess one of the things to point out right at the start is that. LDAP is not just for storing usernames and passwords. You could store anything in it. It's, it, it's just a database that you can put stuff in and ask questions of. It just so happens that um, often that information that is stored there is around like a list of users or like a phone book for an organization, for example. And the um, and it makes sense for there to be, um, you know, for it to be used as a place to put usernames and passwords. And there are ways to do that securely, but there are also ways to do it in an insecure way as well, just so, just to, to raise that at the start. But let's talk a little bit about, about it. So typically an organization will use LDAP to like share a phone book of information about their employees. And so you've got things like the email address, job title, office number, um, like phone number uh, for each employee, for example. And you can use it to also centrally store credentials. And you can also store it like DNS information, DHCP, e um, you know, email servers. There's all kinds of stuff that you can put there. Uh, LDAP is very popular in on like Unix and Linux systems. So if you've got a, a, a number of Linux and Unix systems in your organization, you probably have like an LDAP server that stores some of that central configuration information and you will pull that on, you know, share that information over LDAP to these other systems so they can like be configured in a single place, for example. So LDAP works on TCP and an UDP port 389. Um, and the commands that it includes things like searching for information in the database, adding and modifying or deleting entries. So you know the standard kind of database stuff. Um, you, it's a binary protocol, so if you look at the clear text, like if you, like if you look at uh, Wireshark, for example, and use LDAP, it will look like just binary information because it's, it's, not, it's not like SQL, for example, that's like a text-based query language. It is a protocol for sending information over the network and that will include uh, the way that it's sent over the network is not necessarily like human readable. Um, you know, as it is. By default, it's not encrypted. So that means that even though a human can't read it, uh, a computer can. And if you um, just send like private information over that protocol and you haven't set up encryption and you're just using it in its default way, it's probably sending it in a way where anyone who's on that network, you know, in, on the servers and or um, like routers between you and the server can basically listen in and um, you know access any of that information. So um, since then, it has actually been updated to include encryption add-ons. So you can use TSL, uh, TLS, and um, SSL encryption, and you can tunnel it through SSH. And so there's a bunch of ways that you can securely configure it. Um, there's also, um, so if you're using like an encrypted connection, like you're using TLS or SSL, so you're using a, like a public private key, 
thing uh, and you know so you've got um, the, the way that the uh, in encryption can work is that you can have the server certificate as like a trusted certificate so that you know that you're um, communicating with the, the, the server and not someone else but you have the option as whether or not you actually check the validity of that certificate that whether it's coming from a certificate authority that you trust and some of the LDAP clients don't actually check that um, and it and if that's the case then you can you might be um, you know victim of man and man in the middle attacks uh, because you can basically just use a different certificate and the software won't check that you you're actually talking to the correct server so when you're setting up LDAP, there's something to be careful of is that you are actually are configuring the encryption and that you are um, using certificates and that you are um, verifying the certificates. So LDAP has access control features as well, so you could have specific parts of the database that only certain people are allowed to access as well. So storing and retrieving information in LDAP. Um, so it's it's stored in this hierarchy, like this tree structure of things. Um, and the structure itself is known as the directory information tree, the DIT. Um, and that structure is defined in a schema. And you, so for example, you might have a schema that says that it stores information about people uh, and, and what kinds of information is valid and that you can store under what, you know, uh, what names and things. So this is an example here, so you can see here um, we have a root node, so it's like the main node and it's commonly like a set of DC uh, domain component values. Um, so for example we we can have um, like leads back at um, and that can be made up of leads bucket. Um, is made up of leads bucket DC and AC and UK are, are, are the domain components for that. Uh, and then we can have like common values, uh, the like OUs, the organizational unit. So, for example, we might have academic members of staff. Uh, so that defines the department within an organization um, and so we might have like IT or whatever like we've got an IT team, an academic team, legal team, marketing or whatever and within within that we can have um, common names or, um, or SM for surnames we can use to describe specific items within that so you've got like myself for example like Cliff Schroeder's under there uh, you might have Thalita or Tom um, as different members of staff are all under that same like um, organizational unit. And then the complete path to actually locate a node is um, known as the distinguished name. Um, so for example, we could use CN equals Cliff Schroeder's, OU equals academic, DC equals Leeds Beckett, D um, and Uh, I believe that's been cut off there, you can have DC and DC equals um, AC, DC equals UK. And so that in total is the distinguished name. Um, and so then you can use that to retrieve the information about that member of staff. You can make that query and then all the information that's related to that person will like come back in response to that. So. There are various different servers and things you can use. So Open LDAP or SLAPD or S um, LAPD um, is a common one on on, um, on Linux systems, and there is um, like a command line interface that you can use to do queries by by LDAP search. So you can send queries over the network. Um, if you set up it, if you decide to, to set up LDAP, you can use the LDAP search command to, to check, uh, you know, that it's working over the network to make queries, for example. And there are various kinds of management front ends, like PHP LDAP admin, which is like a web interface kind of dashboard thing that you can install, 
And then you can use that to manage a, an LDAP server and add users and change people's passwords and all the rest of it. So you can like kind of make it easier um, if you know choose to do it that way. So you, like as I said at the very beginning, one of the reasons we're talking about this is because you can use LDAP to s store account information, including password hashes. Uh, and there are various methods for doing that authentication over the network. So you can do plain, that you can use Kerberos, you can use simple authentication and security layer, SASL, um, S -A -S -L, um, and, you, and you can, um, which you can use to add other kinds of authentication schemes, probably not what you need. But when you make that authentication request, um, you, the, the result code comes back, and if you get a response of LDAP success, then you know that the credentials are valid. So you can basically do a, um, a request against the LDAP system, say this username and password, and it will come back saying yes or no, that's correct. And obviously, if you're setting that up, you want to do that with the encryption as well, because otherwise you're sending the username and password over the network for everyone to see. So you make sure you have also got TLS um, encryption set up, and then um, and you've set up your certificate authority, and you've and you're verifying the certificates. And if you've done all that, then you can quite simply do this request over the network, and it will tell you yes, that's correct or not. So, with a lot of Linux software, um, including like Linux itself, uh, like the operating system itself, you can set it up fairly easily to use LDAP, um, and there's a lot of stuff built in to do that. Um, on Windows, you can, but it's it kind of like requires you to add ex uh, like things to Windows to make that work. So you can extend Windows so that you can use an, an external LDAP authentication server. So you can use pgina, um, and, and you, can, um, you can use that to add a, a additional authentication schemes to Windows beyond what's like kind of baked into Windows itself. Um, but if you, if you want your life to be as easy as possible, Windows has better built-in support for or, or it comes with support for all the Active Directory stuff. So um, you need to do a bit of extra work to get Windows to talk to LDAP in that way that I just described, which is the way that a lot of Linux systems will do it. So in Linux, it's, it's quite easy to get it to authenticate against LDAP in the way that I've just described. In Windows, it's, I guess, easier to get it to work with Active Directory because that's what Microsoft kind of like want you to use because that's their solution. But you can get it to authenticate against, uh, like a, um, for example, a Linux LDAP server. However, Windows is, um, you know, have Active Directory as a solution. Uh, a lot of organisations will use a combination of the two. Um, I'm going to talk about Active Directory in a separate video. But Active Directory has LDAP as part of its its own solution. Um, but basically. If you, um, you know, a lot of organizations will have uh, LDAP server to manage some sort of Linux systems and an Active Directory to manage some um, sort of the Windows systems. And you could then do either way. You could have your Linux systems actually authenticated against Active Directory, or you can have your Windows systems authenticating against LDAP, or you can do some kind of synchronization between the two. They're all valid approaches, um, and you know, it's up to the, the needs of of the business and the people making the decisions to, to make a call on that one.